hello everyone welcome back today we're gonna take another look at this uh, uh 66 inch disc harrow from everything attachments i did a prior video on this so this is uh 66 inches wide um 500 pounds fixed all right so the angles are not adjustable and i, I kind of wanted it that way because the more adjustable things are the more likely i am to break them i'm not saying that other people will break them but i tend to break things that are too adjustable um so it's a very simple design um now the um the the first day that i was working on this uh what i did is i tried to float it um so what i did is instead of using this blinking piece here what i did is i put that hook directly onto this pin over here right in this spot over here uh, but in order to reach it what i did is i only attached the hook at the top i left the bottom hook out which did bend this a little bit but not that that matters that much all right and what they did is because i only had the top hook in here uh this was floating right it allowed this thing to float which somebody suggested that might be a really good idea um when i went back and i looked at the video i thought that the that the, the disc carrel was floating a little bit too much what it looked like to me was like the, the the discs in the back uh kept coming off the ground okay so that's why i uh i try i'm trying this setup today i already did like two passes it seems to be working pretty good uh because this kind of forces the back to stay in its position uh these two pieces here i got from tractor supply they're like 15 dollars each but the nice thing about them is they got lots of holes um so you can uh you can you can uh, you know adjust it however you need to get it because that's usually one of the problems that with these quick attach um uh these quick hitches is uh getting that that top um you know link to, to line up now this uh this is the one that comes from harbor freight I think it's about $130. Um, initially, this came with, with fixed bolts over here. Uh, what I have found is that I need to move this hook up and down pretty frequently. So that's why I put these thinner pins in there. Now, these are a little bit thinner. At some point, I'm hoping I will be able to find pins that are a little bit thicker. Um, the, the, the next size up that they had a tractor supply was just too big. Uh, but yeah, I, I, the bolts are no good. I need something that goes in and out really quickly because as I go back and forth from different attachments, I need to move this hook up and down. So that's a big convenience. All right. Uh, the other thing I did is I forgot to do last time is I put the bushings in here, right? So you can see I ha how I got those, the category one, two bushings, uh, that will also give it a little bit less play. Uh, I don't know how much of an issue that was in the, in the first video that I did, um, so this is the ground that I, I disc I disked it first. Uh, I did really good towards the front with the disc harrow. Uh, back here on the back side, I had not plowed that in recent years. So the ground was a little bit harder and I did have a harder time uh, running through it with the disc harrow. And I think it might have been because of the I had too much of a float. Um, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do to, well first of all what I did is uh, the day after I came back and I ran a middle buster through here, which is kind of good because it kind of mixed up the ground a little bit more So that's why you see the rows that you see here. I went through it with the middle buster. Okay um, And today I'm going to go through it with the disc harrow. What I'm also going to do is like this I got ground over here. That's not broken I'm gonna also come back to this and I'm gonna make one row here on this unbroken ground uh, And we're gonna see if there's an improvement on unbroken ground now with the disc harrow okay uh that that you know i have changed the adjustment to it so it uh it flexes it uh, it floats a little bit a lot less rather uh so again this is the everything attachments this harrow cost uh one thousand five hundred dollars um from everything attachments um uh it there was a four month wait okay i ordered it back in i knew there was going to be a four month wait i ordered it back like in november um knowing that it would come in april um but uh it very you know heavy duty uh i did see a few other companies that sold them for a little bit cheaper right but here's the thing at, at the point where i'm spending more than a thousand dollars you know it, it really doesn't make a difference if i'm if i'm paying thirteen hundred dollars for something or fifteen hundred dollars for something i'd rather get something that's just gonna last um you know that's gonna last for like the rest of my life and hopefully the rest of my kids life the, one thing i might do is i might weld a barbell going across over here 
uh, that sticks out and I can hang extra weights there if I need to. So that's, that's an option. Because I, I have lots of uh, barbell weights uh, that I use as a counterweight for the back of the track. In fact, you can see them over there uh, resting on the ground. That's my, that's my counterweight over there uh, on the ground. Yeah, I'll show you guys a real quick look. That's, that's my counterweight. And, I, and that's the great thing about the quick hitch. I can just back up. I want to do some front load work. I just basically back up to this, hook up. I got a thousand pounds right there. Okay, so that's that's really good. What I did is I took off the front bucket on this to lighten up the weight in the front a little bit, uh, give me a little bit more traction in the back. All right, so let me move up the camera. I'll put the camera on a tripod and let's run this. Oh, one of the things I, that did come up uh, as I was testing this earlier, uh, because of because the hook now is about six inches forward. That's basically the highest position that I can get in, which is off the ground, but you know, in some places the ground is uneven. So here's the thing, on certain, in certain spots, I am gonna hit the ground, right? If I, you know, when I don't want to. Um, and I noticed that can be a particular pain in the butt uh, if you're trying to make a turn and the ground is such that the, that the uh, hair on the back is, uh, is hitting the ground. So let me, actually, let me pause this and I'll put this in the tripod. Uh, I should give you guys a good view of the old ground that we're going to be working on and also of the uh, um, the new ground that we're going to break over here. Actually, move it a little bit more to a slant so that as I go past it, you guys can see what what it's doing. Here you go. So let me move it here. Actually, here. This will, get, this will give you guys a better view as I'm going through it. All right. All right, let's get this started.
Okay, so let me give you guys my opinion. Now, the other day when I did this for the first time, it had rained like the day before, so the ground was softer, and apparently that does make it easier to use the disc harrow. Okay, it was it was definitely breaking up the ground easier the day after it rained. Um, over here where I was going through the unbroken ground, uh, and basically I think I was just it looked like it was just clipping the grass. <laughs> you know, it really didn't dig in much. Um, so I would definitely have to run a, a middle buster or a plow through here in order to turn this over. I, I'm um, going to probably end up getting a proper turning plow. You know, um, um, okay. Now in the area that. I had already turned over the other day and then ran through it with the middle buster. Um, that that turned out pretty good. I mean that that that's breaking it up nice. Okay, um, so I, I think I'm just gonna have to break down and get a get a turning plow. I, I don't need it. I don't think I'm gonna need it this year, but you know because I pretty much the area that I want to plant I've already more or less have already broken the ground and um, now the. Um, you know, the, the thing I did notice is that uh, it, it was definitely giving me a little bit more pressure in the back, okay? Although despite, you know, because the ground was a little bit harder, it had less effect on the unbroken area. Um, I would like to turn it a little bit more down, right? You know, I would like to let out the top lick a little bit more, but I would, I would definitely be hitting the ground a little bit more as I turned. And even at this level here, I did notice a couple of times when I was turning, uh, I did actually hit the ground a little bit, not not enough to stop the tractor, but uh, I don't think I can let that down uh, anymore. I mean, that's that's where it's going to have to stay. Uh, I definitely make, you know, I mean, having gone through this, I definitely may want to put a, a, a bar a bar across the top here, welded in place, so I can add extra weights. Uh, that that won't hurt. I would actually do it on this side over here. Just run it, run a bar right across over there. You know, just get like a, you know, just a, an Olympic bar, cut, you know, cut it. And then just just add the weights over here to the side. You know, you can easily get another two, three hundred pounds on there. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, this has been a very interesting, fun adventure. Um, drop some comments below if you got any feedback from me, any suggestions. Uh, everything's appreciated. I'll talk to you all soon.